want to make sure you, you can hear me okay um, so that if you respond other people can probably hear me as well yep we can hear you just fine okay uh, great and you're seeing uh, the first uh, slide in the deck uh, as well yes okay well first and foremost I just want to thank um, thank you Norval um, thank the ASQ um, community for letting me speak to you guys today about about this topic, um, we're gonna we're gonna rapid fire through a lot of great concepts. Um, my goal here today is to give you guys um, enough information on journey management so you know where you might be able to use it uh, in your toolkit and how it might connect into a lot of the quality work um, that you are you are also familiar with. Um, so yeah, as my um, normal, you did. Uh, um, thank you for the introduction on my background. Um, the bottom line about my background is that I've been in a couple different roles uh, that have led me through quality teams, um, and I've gotten one or two belts. I can't remember all the colors, but uh, I've been through some quality work, and I have a great appreciation for everything you guys um, are about and, and are attempting to to help organizations achieve. In fact, um, I think well, I worked in a telecommunications company for most of my career. Um, is, you know, kind of getting going and, and trying different roles. And um, one of the things that I had done was gone, gone through uh, a Greenbelt program. And a after that, I realized, you know, this is pretty neat stuff. I, I want to do more of this. And so I ended up reporting into this department called the Enterprise Accountability Office. <laughs> and so you can imagine with, with a... Um, with a group in a department with that name, you're immediately the most popular guy in the company. Um, and so I was, uh, I was hated everywhere. <laughs> um, and my role was to, uh, to run uh, lean metrics and to do um, measurements across the organizations, across value streams. And, um, and that's what took me into customer experience. Um, the reason it, it bridged into customer experience is that um, we were looking at a lot of the metrics inside the organization and we thought, you know, why is everything so green? Our scorecards are green, uh, you know, cycle times, um, waste is down. Why are we so green but yet our customers are so mad? <laughs> uh, and that's, uh, that was when it occurred to us that, hey, we might want to think about not just um, our perspective, but their perspective. And so we flipped, uh, we flipped the coin around and we looked at the customer experience through the customer's lens. Uh, and on it goes into, um, into what we're going to talk about today, which is um, really finding the heart of, of what customers are feeling as they go through journeys with your company. So um, I'm going to talk about, you know, what is journey management? I'm just going to lay out, lay out some frameworks um, around what it is, why you might want to think about it, uh, just definitions. Um, we will also talk about how you enable profit. How, what, what's the, you know, why use it? What's the point? Um, and how it helps align organizations. Um, I'll show you a few of the steps to executing journey management. Um, it's a, this is all just kind of teaser stuff, uh, high, you know, sort of introductory stuff. There are courses like two, three day intensive immersion type workshops. We, we run some of these, um, but it's typically a very deep thing to, to, to learn, um, but it's an amazing tool to have. Um, uh, you know, the other thing I'll show is a little bit about the technologies that are available um, and how that can help you scale. And, and I, I do want to say before I get started that I would, I would love to take questions as I go. I'm going to attempt to see um, in the chat room it, what comes in. If I miss your question, this uh, is just because my eyes are focused on another part of my screen. So um, hang in there and uh, we'll, we'll get it figured out. Um, just quickly, the company that I'm, I'm with today, um, I'm, I'm the product officer for a, a group called Strativity Group. Um, Strativity Group is a leading world, uh, sort of world-renowned transformation firm for customer experience. Um, we've worked with large organizations, especially um, big auto manufacturing, medical device companies, um, insurance. But the point here I'm trying to, to show you guys, just so you know, um, I'm currently not in what we would call a practitioner role for customer experience. I'm in a role of helping other people. Um, and through our practice here, 
you know, we offer um, a handful of, of great ideas around how you can re rewrite the book on your customer experience. Um, the technology and platform section of the bottom of this little donut wheel on the right, that's that's the role I, I fill for, for Strativity Group. Um, and so we offer, you know, consulting and education and communication research. But today, the technology and platforms, it's all about how do you create scale through journey management. And so I just wanted you to know where I'm coming from and that this is, uh, I'm, I'm part of a, a bigger team. All right. Um, we've, we, you've probably been hearing journey mapping, journey management. I mean, it seems to be um, finding its way into most circles. And if you're a part of a quality team, you're probably either paired up with or in the same organization or, or somewhere near a customer experience team or a market research team. Um, these things tend to sort of migrate together because, um, as I was mentioning earlier, how you lean out an organization and make it more effective uh, from the inside perspective is also um, the other side of the coin is the customer perspective. And so I think where, where that becomes important is that this is not just a, a trendy, hot topic, you know, customer journey management. It's actually um, been around for, I'd say, eight years, but it's gotten more formal, and it's gotten more disciplined, and it's gotten more uh, proven. And I don't think it's going anywhere. I really don't. It's, uh, when you see what, it's, what the power of it is, uh, I think you'll probably agree. What is loyalty versus satisfaction? I want to start with this because um, it kind of lays the groundwork for, for the whole point of why we're talking. And, and the bottom line here is that when you're, when you're talking about satisfaction, when you're concerned with satisfaction, you can be satisfied with a brand. Um, you could be satisfied with an experience you have with your cell phone carrier. You know, you call them, you talk to them, you get what you need done, and you hang up, and on you go. But that's just sort of measuring how someone is um, how someone is performing against your expectations. But it's not perf it's not really measuring the rational and emotional ties you have, which is what loyalty measures. And loyalty is all about hooking yourself up uh, to a company because not only do they perform well, but they know you and they, they care about you. You have an emotional connection to the company. You know, if I were to ask you, um, let's use insurance as an example. If you get into a fender bender and all of a sudden, um, you know, you, you, you get out of your car, you're pretty shaken up, and you, you make that phone call to your insurance company and say, hey, uh, I'm in this tough spot, what do I need to do? And if they are, um, you know, sort of, crude, rigid, they say, yeah, okay, you need to fill out this form, uh, call us uh, in two days and give us this and this and this and this. And, you know, yes, they've met expectation, they got you what you need, but there's a different level that they can, that they can handle that. So if you have another example might be, hey, I, are you okay? Is everybody all right on the scene? Let me walk you through this. Let me care about you as a person in this really tender moment those types of experiences will create loyalty, which means when, the, when it's time to renew that policy, you're going to remember that. You're going to remember those things uh, that, where they took really good care of you. I think if I were to ask, you know, who has, uh, who's loyal to a brand and why, uh, you would have a lot of personal stories. And so my whole point here is that we, we talk a lot about satisfaction as being the, the thing we need to chase. And we need to make sure that that's where we're, where we're at. But it's not enough. Loyalty is, is the ultimate thing you want to go after. If you, if you know that you're going to receive uh, renewals or you're going to have customers stick with you, come back to you, it costs six to seven times less to keep a customer than get a new one. And the loyal customers are worth ten times more than their first purchase. And so this is the point that brings us to emotion. If we want to measure and manage loyalty, we need to measure and manage emotion, which is a, 
a kind of a different angle on on things. It's like it's not just quality. It's uh, it's uh, it's quality of an emotion. And so it gets really soft and squishy, and, and it, it can be uncomfortable to have to think about how we run our business through the lens of emotion. Journey mapping and uh, journey management is the tool to get you to understanding and managing emotion, hence improving loyalty, hence improving the bottom line. Journey maps are the foundational backbone of CX programs. So you, you probably have heard of CX teams that are really into um, measuring, uh, doing surveys. You know, they call it voice of customer, VOC. Uh, they run surveys, they run tractional, uh, transactional and, and uh, relationship surveys. These things are good, um, but those used to be the core. They're, they're no longer the core. Journey mapping, journey management is in the center of CX teams. It's, it's the beginning. It's where you start. It's how you define what's next. They give you a human context. So journey maps are, are, are the, um, you know, the, the lens of the customer. It's very human. It's very, um, uh, you know, there's nothing rigid about it. And what we're finding is that it's becoming the catalyst for companies to be customer centric. When you share, you create, you share, you, you build teams and you, you run journey mapping workshops, it becomes a burning platform for change because it becomes so obvious how the customer emotion is just getting, getting trashed. Norval, you still with me? Just want to make sure I'm, I'm still getting picked up. Yep, still here. Okay, great. So, let's define what a journey map is. The, vis the, the, the uh, image on the right, it's, um, it's all about perception. Okay, when, you, when we're working on journey maps, when we're doing journey management, we are, our goal is to put on the customer goggles and go through the interactions and emotions through the eyes of a customer when attempting to accomplish an intention with an organization. So let me let me say that again. It's a journey map is a visual display of interactions and emotions seen through the eyes of a customer when attempting to accomplish an intention. So if your intention is to um, receive a better deal on your cable bill, on your cable uh, you know, contract. That is your intention. How you go about that, your emotions as you go about that, you can build a journey map around that and make a lot of progress in, uh, in showing the organization what that's like. But you have to put on the customer's goggles. So let me talk about a touch point. Inside those journey maps is a series of touch points. Touch points are interactions that either a customer initiates or receives during a journey. So they often occur with the brand in focus, but not exclusively. So while you're calling that cable company, that first touch point would be the IVR. And the second touch point would be I talk to the rep. And the third touch point would be um, I receive an email uh, with my updated information. So those are touch points. Um, journey management. So th you, uh, this is similar to how you can think about, you know, the the quality world because it's journey map. Journey management is about bringing this to scale. A journey map is a is a is a one thing. A journey management. It's a discipline. It's a way of thinking. It's a mindset. It's it's activating a portfolio of maps. It's, getting, it's bringing scale uh, with cost efficiencies and you're working to create loyalty to improvements that are most impactful to emotions. You're, you're managing emotions across your business and that is, um, that is where you can have governance, you can have teams of people that are thinking and, and working towards the same direction um, and using journey maps as the core. Let's, uh, let's look at a couple sample maps. These are not all my maps or, or things I've worked on. I've done lots and lots of maps. Um, but I grabbed a smattering of, 
of maps off the uh, off the internet and from people that I know. And you know, don't don't try to read any of this on the screen. I think that what I'm trying to show you guys is that journey maps are um, a lot of this is is how you display it, how you how you share it. You know, and so it could look like a Candyland board. There could be emojis, there could be circles and uh, arrows. Um, you're often showing what the customer is thinking and feeling and doing, and it's somewhat linear. I mean, there, if you think about a, a real journey you have, sometimes a journey goes in a circle and it doesn't go in a straight line. Um, but my point here is that you can see there's different ways to go about it, and um, the one thing I'll share with you today is that there's some there's some core things that need to go into every journey map. No matter what the output looks like, the inputs um, should be pretty similar. And then you know after you've done in the inputs, you can hand it to a design, a graphic designer, or somebody to, to help it uh, polish out um, because it has to be easy to understand. Um, they all have emotion. Every single map in here has emotion. And I think that's really key uh, for you guys to see is that it doesn't matter, you know, these curves, the emojis, these are these are relating uh, to people. You've got to find a way to manage emotions and see where the emotions are tough. So another piece of information around mapping versus management. On the left, um, I was actually working with uh, Best Buy. Uh, they they know I, I I use them as an example sometimes. On the left is a lot of their their journey mapping work, and you can imagine that if you put up a bunch of sticky notes in a room uh, on butcher paper, the um, the the customer centric thinking, the energy, it can be quite positive. It's very interactive. You're standing, you're moving. There's a lot of activity going into a map, and I think that's very, very powerful. What the problem is is that it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere unless you unless you take it digital or you find a way to bring it into action and uh, action plans. And so journey management, how that's different. This is one example of how it's different. You're again, you're moving into a portfolio of maps. You could take the map on the left and do it again and again and again with a, a small. Uh, marginal cost of change if it's moved into a management system. There's a direct link to action and it's a sustained effort. So it goes on and on. It doesn't, it's not a one-time event. The maps are alive and the maps are linking into organizational action plans and there's change being accomplished. So we still haven't talked about how you do maps and I'm going to get into that a little bit more. Um, but let me tell you about the value, the, you know, some of the why. Actually, let me tell you a quick story that kind of illustrates this. Um, when I was at uh, this telecommunications company, uh, this was circa 2011, maybe. There was an or there was a another company that we were acquiring, and it was another large telecom company. And if you're in telecom, you know that that's that's the game, right? You just everybody buys each other until there's nobody left to buy <laughs> and then you're one of the top three. Um, but here's the thing is you, you, uh, they, they asked us uh, as the CX team, they said, hey, can you, can you build us a, a journey map of the combined company's customer experience? And, um, you know, we're like, wow, um, we, don't, we don't really know much about this other company that we're buying, you know? And so it, it became this really daunting task and it was it's huge it's huge to even think about how do you break that down it's a, it's a, it's a massive customer experience and so what happened was we got our team together we got their team together we got we got sat in a conference room actually it was like a big uh, sort of a workshoppy room uh, in the basement of this building and for two days we put up post-its on the wall and the post-its were grouped by value stream so we had um, lead to order you know, order to, well, let's lead to quote, quote to order, order to uh, something else. I don't remember them all, but we had we had them all grouped like that. And then we brought the, the executives, we brought them down from the top floor 
of the building. And at that point, that top floor was called the God Pod. So they came down from the God Pod and they said, oh, wow, look at all the work you've done. You've done an amazing job. You've got uh, touch points all over the wall. Like on, I'm talking about a huge room and this is like three or four walls wrapping around uh, in this massive, uh, this massive journey map. And they said, so tell us about the, you know, we've got 300 touch points. Tell us about the 40 that matter. And we looked at each other like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. They all matter, you know. And so, and so then they said, well, tell us what you're going to do about it. And uh, so this is just one of those examples of we didn't have a plan. We, we built the map, but we didn't know what we were going to do with it. So we ended up putting it into a spreadsheet. And then the spreadsheet got put into an access database. And then the access database got put into a SharePoint site. And before you know it, we didn't even, we, we can't remember what we mapped. And so the story, the point of the story is, you know, if you're not planning ahead of time, you're not going to have the outcomes and you're not going to know where you're going to put all this stuff and you're not going to have action plans. Our stakeholders, they faded. They didn't really even remember the map after we had actually gotten it into a format that to be used. And so you kind of have to plan for the ROI up front. Let me talk about where you get ROI. So these are in order of uh, impact, meaning number five probably has a, a good impact, but less than number one. So channel optimization is a great way to get um, ROI out of a journey map. If you put a journey map together, the touch points will show which channels are being used at which time from the customer's point of view. And that leads to uh, optimizing based on different personas saying, okay, if I'm this type of a user or persona, um, I'm going to use these channels. Therefore, let's not offer these other channels. Let's delete channels. Let's eliminate channels. Uh, you get rid of touch. You get rid of channels you don't need. It's huge. It's a huge way to save money. Um, the second way is to remove ineffective touch points. So this is an example of, let's say there's that that newsletter that goes out. You know, marketing works with operations. They build this great newsletter. They send it to their customers, you know, the fourth Tuesday of every month. And no one cares. No one reads it. It's useless. Customers this just immediately delete it if they even open it. Um, you can find ways to re remove these things. Once you look at it through the customer's perspective, you're not going to create touch points that aren't helping the customer or adding value. And so you can remove ineffective touch points, therefore saving a bunch of time and money. Um, let's talk about word of mouth. So uh, you you probably, you guys have all had the uh, NPS question, I'm sure, uh, net promoter score, where it says, how likely are you to recommend um, this company because uh, to your colleagues or, or friends? And they give you a 10-point scale. There's a lot of math behind that question um, that results in, you know, promoters versus detractors, and and uh, wh what happens is you get free marketing and you get free results if you get free referrals, which is all about the nines and the tens. So if you design the journey to make word of mouth easier, meaning I might ask you to promote my brand, to promote my company. Um, let's let's talk about a car a car purchase. If you're buying a car and you're ready to um, you're, you're going to design the journey for word of mouth. You're not going to ask the customer to promote your brand when they're in the financing room or in the financing process, you know, when they're going back and forth to the guy behind the glass. That'd be a horrible time to ask for a referral or a reference. The best time might be when you give them the keys and the car's polished and they're driving off a lot and you put their favorite beverage in the vehicle and you turn their radio stations exactly how they want it. And you give them like that whole Facebook uh, selfie image thing. And you can, you know, these are things when you can time these things so it actually produces results and that you get word of mouth at the right moments. Journey mapping allows you to do that. Emotional segmentation. So if you think about a customer's emotion as like a, a scale of, of, let's say, extremely happy to extremely upset. What, you'll, what journey mapping will allow you to do, it'll allow you to see where the journey is extremely upset, and you can install 
what I call emotional guardrails. These are things that um, it's, it's a guardrail that prevents the customer from going off the emotional deep end. For example, if you proactively tell a customer that there is a part of the journey where communication might die down or a part in the journey where um, they may experience um, delays or they may get frustrated, proactive communication is a guardrail. And it's a guardrail such that when they get to that point, they're like, oh, so-and-so told me ahead of time this was going to happen. Yeah, I'm upset, but I'm not about to, to blow up uh, your call center or blow you up on Twitter. Um, so this, this, is really, this is what journey mapping allows. You can find those points in the journey where um, you, can, you can install an emotional guardrail. Distraction is a guardrail. Communication is a guardrail. Um, there are ways to... Um, even give financial incentives that can be a guardrail. So there's a lot of sort of ways around it, but you can't see it until you have a journey map. But once you see it, you can do something about it. And it's not always fixing process. It's, it's sometimes it's just managing emotion. For example, if you're in a, if you're in a, um, I, I go to my, my car dealer, you know, to get my oil change. And I always go to the same place and see the same guy. And the reason I do that is because I'm there for two or three hours, but I, I don't know I'm there for two or three hours because they have this amazing waiting room where I got Wi-Fi, there's, there's uh, HDTV on, there's leather couches, there's some uh, there's cookies, there's some guy in the corner making omelets. Like, it's just it's crazy. But they're managing my emotions. They don't want me to get frustrated at how long it's taking. So these are tricks that really work. And then finally, organizational alignment. This is important because... This is about understanding from the customer's perspective what if I'm if I'm a Susan in accounting and I know what the customer was told and experienced three steps up not from an internal side or, or from a just a process side but from the side of this is the customer's feeling and what they went through three steps earlier I'm going to handle that experience differently. I'm going to handle customers differently based on what I know about their journey. And so this is about alignment up and downstream such that you can create a unified experience. You can create um, coherency in the intention you want to deliver. And therefore, you know, you're, you're not just uh, getting lucky when a customer has a great experience. It's, it's completely designed. And, uh, and that's something that amounts to a massive, uh, clear out of waste of efficient it, it creates efficiencies it's it's super helpful all right um i was going to check in again norval you there i haven't seen any questions pop in yep we're still all here all right is it normally this uh this much talking and, and no and no questions I don't, I don't know if i should take questions or just keep going I believe people are, are used to asking their questions at the end of the talk, so I uh, guess unless we see a question come up in the meantime, just uh, continue to carry on. All right, so let's talk about the six steps to journey management. So this is, a, we're going to get into how do you execute on journey management. Uh, this is just, a, again, a, a flyover. There's, you can't really... You know, I'm not going to leave this webinar and, and go build journey maps uh, unless you know more about it. But I'll give you kind of the the big picture on how you attack it. So there's six steps to to getting there. So first is definition. Um, you know, build a plan uh, that leads to the goals you want. So this is typically like a charter, and um, I know from the call quality side. There's, there's a lot of good charters out there and, and good structure around that. It's the same concept. Uh, you might have a couple different attributes you're capturing, but um, you're building a charter and you're getting um, logistics in place for workshops and events that are, are going to scale. Um, then you're going to prepare. So this is about grabbing the data, getting the data um, analyzed. This is about personas, which I'll talk about in a minute, understanding those customer types, um, making sure that you have not just data going in, but it's been analyzed and it's, there's, there's like, uh, there's some, uh, I don't know, understanding 
there's understanding about what the data is telling you. So you're not even, you're not doing a, you know, this isn't just about customer data, this is about operational data um, and getting the, the picture of, of that so that when you're in a journey mapping workshop, you don't go down the, uh, the rabbit holes, right? So you can focus on the 80 and not the 20 because the data will tell you, hey, uh, instead of talking about, you know, that one customer that got that one bad experience and it got escalated to, you know, the CEO, um, we could talk about that for three hours, but let's look at the data. And the data shows that, you know, 99% of our clients and customers with escalations go to the escalation team. You know, so things like that can really help keep your meeting and your, your efforts on track. Then you build, you make the map, you take it, uh, you take it up and, and show, um, show all the touch points and how they intersect and interact with, with how the customer is seeing it. Validation is big. So you can't just assume that you got the map right. You have to talk to customers. There's a lot of ways to do this. It's kind of scary to say, all right, let's, let's take this, this uh, ugly map and show it to a customer when you may have, um, you know, other ways you might want to do that. You, you could do it through technology. You could bring customers into focus groups and not really show them the map, but talk to them about the experiences they have. The whole point here is don't, uh, don't make the assumption that the map is right until you've talked to customers and also employees. Uh, there is a team of people that are going to help you with the map, but those, 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 uh, they don't always know for sure what, let's say, that these are the right touch points, that they're in the right order, and how are we doing on those touch points. So validation is big. Commit. So once you've got the validation, you've analyzed the map, you're ready to start sharing it and start building out the stakeholders in a way that they can they can understand and say, ah, I get it now. I see why um, my team might need to do something differently. You know, I wasn't really thinking about it through the customer's perspective, but here here it's very clear. And so you bring uh, people together, you get the commitment, you get the action plans in place, and then you start to manage that. And so this is goes into like the governance sort of structure where you have KPIs, you're meeting regularly, there's core teams, the maps are alive, they change as the experience changes, and then you keep going down the path of improving the business um, and keeping it customer-centric. Ah, thank you, Jessica. Validate, validate, yes, we should all validate. Um, I was going to share, there was a slide I had about four different ways to validate. So if you want to talk to me later, I can share that with you. It's, it's, uh, it goes from expensive to not expensive, basically. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about types of journeys. But in order to do that, I want to, I want to kind of ask these questions of, if you're going into a journey mapping workshop, or you want to do a journey map, where do you start? I mean, if you if you have somebody's yelling about something and there's a squeaky wheel, you know, yeah, you could do that, but you need to kind of frame it in. What's the where does it fit in in the, in the population in the world of journey maps? And so I'm going to give you a little bit of framework to do that. The biggest the biggest or macro map you can do is the relationship map. So if you think about your relationship with, uh, I'll keep using your cable or or uh, you know, let's just call it Comcast. Uh, if you're talking about your relationship with Comcast, you're going to think about the relationship as a whole, like from the beginning to your uh, to how you found out about them, to you know how you got your first products, the ongoing relationship. So it's the big macro map. So you talk about the relationship so that you can then talk about the transactions. So if we understand those transactions and where we can improve then we can improve the relationship. So a transaction is just that. I, I'm, I, like I said earlier, I want to get a better deal on my cable or I want to fix, uh, I want to understand the outage that, that's happening. So if we can discuss our interactions, then we can improve our transactions, which improve our relationship. So the interaction is the very bottom micro map that is the detail. So we go from macro down to micro, you fix the micro, 
it rolls back up to fix the macro. Sounds like a like a <laughs> like a, a poem or a rap I need might need to make. So these are um, this is uh, kind of the objectives here. Is it's the same across all three. If whatever level of journey mapping you're doing, you're you're identifying the loyalty builders, the eroders. You're finding areas where you can improve it. You are looking at it through the customer's eyes. So it doesn't change, you know, the approach. You just need to have a common language around what journey are we mapping. This picture will make it even more clear. So your scope is different. If you're at a relationship journey, the top level, awareness, research, decision, these are called life cycle stages, and they're similar to value streams, um, but it maybe is just in a more customer, I don't know, uh, more customer friendly sort of tone or, or language. Um, and so these, these cycle, life cycle stages are, are common across journeys. It, it actually is common across industries. You don't have to use these. There's there's variations on it, but this is an example of a relationship journey. So from the beginning to being aware, all the way through to my ongoing advocacy. Now let's blow out a transaction journey. So if I want to talk about support as a, as a sub journey, now I'm looking at discovery, research, communicate, solution, and restore. So my my support journey is that subset, and so you can find how this is going to go next. Interactions are a sub journey of transactions. So if I have a, if I need to communicate um, with my provider, I may have a channel I'm going to use. Let's say chat. I'm going to make my request and then I'm going to receive a response. So the macro is the top level. The micro is the bottom. Um, this is the framework you can use when you're talking about, okay, let's map a journey. Well, the top journey is kind of broad and, and over, over, overarching. It's, it's very good for communicating big picture, but it's not going to be that actionable because you're going to have to peel the onion just like in anything. Um, so it depends what your use case is. So let's look at some of those pros and cons. A relationship journey, that's for all customers typically. You're not looking at it for just a certain segment. Um, it's the entire company is the audience. And then, you know, this is the that builds the common language, uh, it's the high level. The cons to the relationship journey is that it's going to require additional mapping um, to get to action plannings often. And then, you know, the transactional journey and the interaction journey on the right, those are more, more detailed. You're going to take a specific journey, you're going to be able to link it to departments, you're going to be able to get targeted action plans. I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit, looking at the time. These are some ingredients to a journey map. So you have a persona. You put on their goggles. You, you then look at the intention of the persona, let's say to get product prices. That persona has a story. So that story gets put through the life cycle of the uh, customer, and then you get a journey map. Then you build the journey map. Let's look at an example. of. A, I'm going to go through these. An example of a persona is, um, you know, I've got, Oh, let's see. It's, this is a, like a behavior, behaviors and preferences that are amalgamated into a single character. So it's a group of customers. It's not a segment because a segment is more of a, it could be marketing, like a, how you're going to go to market. Uh, it's more internal. Personas are more external, like in, outside in. So a group of customers that thinks the same way and has the same priorities can be built into a persona. And so when you think about, I got to put on a customer's lens, I got to put the goggles on. You typically select a persona, and if you don't have one, you can build one. Um, there's cheap ways and expensive ways to personas, but um, this is an example of one that's empty. It's a very like low fidelity example, but I just wanted you to see, you know, you're talking about income and age and priorities and frustrations and behaviors and where they trust media, where they don't. Um, these are things that are important. So you have your persona, then you think about intentions. Um, so an intention is just that. I, I intend to uh, buy an airplane ticket. I intend to book a hotel, whatever. I, I, I need to. I need new IT solution for my for my company. 
you prioritize the intentions that you're going to tackle based on the number of impacted customers and the degree of negativity. The tiebreaker, uh, if you have a bunch of impacted customers and a bunch of negative activity, would be the cost of the, the cost of that intention to your business, like it's driving high call volumes, or the revenue that uh, is at uh, is at risk, like it's a it's an offer or um, a sales opportunity that is just completely blown away. So let's 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 look at this. If you if you have a high degree of impacted customers, um, like let's say uh, billing, I, I intend to fix my my invoice. So a lot of customers probably do that, you know, maybe enough that it might be uh, towards the right on the bottom. And degree of negative emotion, well, you're talking about financial uh, financial context. It probably does have a lot of emotion tied up. And so this is this is just an example of how you take the personas and you take the intentions, and then you, you then you're ready to figure out we're going to move to a map. All right, so you get the life cycle stages. The, this is an auto purchase, so big picture. You know, how does the customer feel? What do they do see, feel, and research, and then in test drive and decision? So you're starting to frame the those those big life cycle stages, so that you can build out a map. Let's look at a touch point. So a touch point. This is the the these are the the things you're going to put on the wall, all right? And they're going to go underneath those life cycle stages. So Here's an example of a template we have. Um, you know, we're it's proprietary, but it, you know, you can kind of get the gist here. So you have a touch point name. What life cycle stage is it? What are the drivers of success? What does the customer think about this touch point? Like it, it goes well when X Y Z happens. What are the channels I'm using? What are the emotions I'm having in this touch point? Who owns this touch point internally? You know, department owners. So you can kind of get accountability. What are the tools that are being used internally? Uh, success measures. So what are the metrics that are being used and exceptions? So you take the touch points, let's say research, and you blow it out into a into a touch. So research is going to have a bunch of different touch points, but this is an example of searching for inventory. You know, I want the cards to be accurate. I want the contact info available. I'm going to use web, phone, I'm going to use your app. I'm going to be positive but guarded. You know, this is this is a an example of how you start to build out these touch points and then put them into uh, into a bigger picture. I just wanted to take one and then the top right is just a you know hey we've got a bunch of these going on like literally you could have 70 80 150 touch points it's a very immersive experience but it you got to get to that detail to map it out how do you measure this ongoing you got to look through the kpis right so let's talk about governance a little bit um, there's four that i like to use right it is this are we completing our initiatives are we seeing operational impact is loyalty improving, and do we have a financial impact? So you would think, oh, we're talking about customer experience, just the soft sort of gushy stuff that, you know, we're talking about loyalty. No, we're not. We're talking about everything. Um, and that's, that's something that just because you start with the lens of emotion, it doesn't mean you're not going to have this huge impact. You are. Um, it's 50% it's of the relationship is emotional. 50% is rational and 50% is emotional. So it's really about keying into these things so that you don't just look at a green scorecard and wonder why customers are angry. If we're completing our initiatives, we've got, you know, uh, you know, we've got progress on the map, right? That's that's the whole point. We've got to, we've got to create action plans. We've got to increase our champions. We have to celebrate. Uh, we have to validate. These are the things we have to do to complete initiatives. Operational impact, you know, this is kind of more the, the on the um, the internal side. Cycle times, cost to serve. These are some examples. Loyalty, MPS, CSAT, customer effort, sentiment. You know, um, analytics around voice and um, and you know the, the the overall sort of vibe from the customer. And then financial impact would be retention, customer lifetime value, share of wallet, new sales. So. Um, just some sample things for you to consider when you get into governance side, which is that sixth step. Um, things to watch out for. This is where you can get stuck in the mud. Um, going fast again, guys. We're just trying to get to uh, a one-minute demo of technology, and then we'll I'll hand it back over. Um, 
no clear outcomes, right? So if you don't have a plan going in, you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose interest from your stakeholders and they're going to be like, oh, that was fun, but so what? Misunderstanding the methodology. So this is not process mapping. There's, uh, it's a, it links very well to process mapping. You can, a process map would be uh, a link into a touch point, but it's not the same. You're not dealing with emotion. You're not dealing with these other things when, when you're just doing process mapping and you're not doing outside in. It's sometimes, you know, this, this is a difference. So you just have to be really sure you don't fall into the trap of process mapping. Staying in the customer's voice is huge. The scope, if, it's, if you go too big, you're not going to get to action. I think you guys understand that. Checking a box. So the CEO or the chief marketing officer goes to a conference. Hey, journey mapping is awesome. Everybody's doing it. We should do that. Let's come back and let's ask our, you know, our team to do it. You're checking a box. There's no real deep sort of ownership or engagement. It's not going to work because it'll just collect dust. Um, and you know, it's not just about doing it. It's about actually following through and making a change. And then adoption. You might not get adoption if you don't humanize the map, right? If the map isn't shared in a way that's uh, bringing a story, it's not, you know, you need images, you need video, you need um, emotion to really come through so people can buy in and buy into the change you want to make. Touchpoint Dashboard is one of the tools that is used in scale. It's a journey manager for the enterprise type tool. It's SaaS based. Um, you can move from visualization to enterprise action. Um, I do uh, demos regularly on how you build maps, you sh share them, you validate them, you, you analyze the information, you present them out, you take action, you manage that. Uh, I'm just going to show the screen just because we're out of time, but um, this is the, the main page where you have a bunch of maps uh, on Touchpoint Dashboard. Here's a map uh, we built for the Amazon Alexa journey, the Amazon Echo. So this is a, a persona. On the left, a little bit about the journey, what the intention is. You have a legend on the bottom. You have the life cycle stages. This is called the canvas. And when you add a touch point, the touch point is something you can add and drag around. And then there's a lot of detail below on the front stage, the channel, you know, what's going on with, you, with each of these things, um, the backstage, VOC data. So every touch point is a miniature database. And you can then take this into different views. You could see it by, let's say, actor. What are they doing in marketing? What are they doing in uh, data analytics in the warehouse team? Or you want to see it by channel. Maybe you want to tell a story about the customer. So you can, um, you can go and, and say, I, I'm ready to share this with, with the executives or my stakeholders. And so I'll start a story and I'll pan through this this journey, one image at a time, I'll tell the story of, of this uh, jazzy Jessica and how she hears about Alexa and then she sees it on Facebook and then she's watching our commercials. And so, you know, this is kind of a, just a taste of what is out there. There's a lot of tools. Uh, we happen to, um, I run, uh, you know, I'm the product guy. I head up uh, Touchpoint Dashboard and I'd love to talk to you guys in the future about what this is and uh, and how you can create scale and action plans right out right out of this. So um, I'm going to close with this uh, question. You know what what were you missing about journey mapping before today? And I will then let you know that we have a workshop coming up where we teach all this in depth. This one's in Dallas, September 12th and 13th. Um, we're going to do a tour of the, uh, the, the AT&T stadium that the Cowboys play at and have some experiences there. And then, um, you know, it's not about the journey. It's, uh, it teaches you a lot about your destination. So I'll hand that back to you, um, Norval, if there's questions, I'm happy to take them with the two minutes left. Okay. Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, we do have some time open for questions. If anybody does have uh, a question they'd like to ask Peter, uh, please put it into the chat box and uh, we'll take a look at it. Uh, I am going to, in the interest of time, send you all this uh, quick message here regarding uh, door prizes uh, for today. And what I'm going to do is I have three of them to give away for today's event as a way of promoting our Section 50th webinar on October 17th. I will have information 
uh, in the email that I'll be sending out here later this afternoon that will have the link to the feedback survey and also the link to where to find the recording of this webinar on the, uh, the section's YouTube channel. So uh, be looking for that uh, here later today. Um, looking in the chat box, and I'm not seeing anything. Of course, somebody could still be typing. Uh, as people may be typing, I'd like to remind everybody once again that our next webinar will be on Tuesday uh, of next week, and that will be the 18th. And the subject is How to Lead Change from Any Position by Kelly Keinzel. And we look forward to having uh, many of you join us uh, hopefully next week. Uh, we've got several people who have registered for next week. Uh, some of the same uh, folks that I see online uh, right now are um, uh, you know, also registered for next week as well. So uh, we hope to see many of you next week. Uh, Peter, I am not seeing any questions. Uh, are they? Are they welcome to email you at your address at Strativity if they do have questions later? Yeah, of course. Yeah, everybody, you know, I, I, I would say I would love to hear, you know, what what piece you were missing about journey, ma journey, match, journey management and um, what I can do to help you understand it even further. Um, happy to take those over email. Um, you can just hit me up there at strativity.com, and uh, we will be uh, we will be in touch. And I I want to thank you again, Norval, and I want to thank the the audience for uh, tuning in. I think this is a hopefully a helpful topic to give people some context on this whole journey management, journey mapping thing that's been uh, that's been talked about quite a while now. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Peter, uh, for your time today uh, in presenting this topic for us. And thank you all uh, also for joining us. And we may see many of you on Tuesday. Uh, until then, I hope everybody has a good rest of the day. Uh, take care and goodbye now.